This video was brought to you by Chart Mogul. Their tool automatically generates all the SaaS subscription analytics you need to run your business like a pro. You can use it to measure, understand, and grow your recurring revenue. Go to chartmogul.com slash swiping to get a $50 a month discount for your first 12 months. Would you like to make history? Most of you will say yes, but there's a catch. When you do, no one will remember you. And those who do will look back at you as failure. So I ask you again, would you like to make history? Well, that's what General Magic did. And its story is one of the most important company stories in Silicon Valley, but chances are you have never heard of it. So let's look at how these visionaries wanted to change the world and did, just not the way they intended. It's General Magic in this episode of Company Forensics. The Origins. Can you name the leader of making unheard of history? That'll be Mark Porat. He had previously worked at the reputable Aspen Institute. After his time there, he co-founded the Private Satellite Network, a video conference system which he eventually sold to Apple. So he ended up working for them. For years, he had one idea that he believed could change the world. In today's terms, his concept is ordinary, but back in the late 80s, it was nothing short of sci-fi. Porat had envisioned a sleek, elegant, buttonless device. It could make calls, send emails, had a bunch of apps from games to stock trading. Moreover, it was portable so that people would carry it all the time. So he named it Pocket Crystal. And in his own words, we really had it. In short, he had envisioned today's smartphone. We have to remember that back then, computers were gray and clunky, chips were massive and RAM was scarce. So the idea of portable devices was just ludicrous. John Scully, Apple CEO, if you don't know that Apple story, go watch our video about it. He admitted that Port won him over in no time. And it wasn't only him. He also convinced Andy Hertzfeld and Bill Atkinson to join him, two essential figures for Apple's early growth. So he, along with Hertzfeld and Atkinson, created a spin-off company with the backing of Apple, General Magic. The mysticism behind General Magic. Anyone then, everyone who spoke with Porat felt the force of his vision and determination. He even convinced Apple. This startup had all the stars of the tech world, Apple's funding and a tightly guarded secret. Plus, you couldn't get an interview and speaking inside the offices was close to impossible. Think of the intrigue. Of course, in no time, rumors started spreading around Silicon Valley. People were desperate to work at General Magic, but access was so tricky that some even tried to break in just for an interview or a glimpse. Those that did get in ran into top level secrecy with strict norms and security procedures. But once you got past the legal hush, it was the epitome of a startup. The team held meetings on the floor. Rabbits roamed free to inspire creativity and there was no dress code. There were no managers and any idea was worth analyzing. And in the heart of it all was one vision, changing the world through one device. The product? General Magic believed this device would change your life. Atkinson even said that you were going to run your life through it. Now, of course, they just had to make it work first, right? A functional touchscreen, apps, emails, connectivity, and a stylus. Plus, it couldn't be too expensive. And by the way, it had to be small enough to carry. That's a challenge, right? Well, the team wasn't afraid. People like Tony Fidel and Megan Smith tackled the challenges with a smile on their faces. Footage shows them with energy, determination, and no fear. They were, after all, cradling the embryonic stages of smartphones. A software architect for a company, Darren Adler, told interviewers that the company aimed to create everything needed Needed to fulfill its vision. But there was a problem, of course. If you want to change the world, you need to harness the potential in the right direction. And it seemed like no one at General Magic was really good at that. So people loved the creative stage and only that stage. Remember that for the future. Things get serious. The tales, the ideas, and the vision lured big names like Sony, AT&T, Philips, Motorola, and 12 others into investing and creating the General Magic Alliance. Big corporations and also possible competitors. So the money came with strict conditions. Tighter secrecy ensued and there was a looming tension. But the company could create prototypes and continue dreaming with the newfound cash. But one mistake and any of the 16 companies could pull out. Ironically, the first big blow wouldn't come from the outside. The first dagger. A small startup, an all-star team, relentless attitude, funds from Apple and from other giants, and a great idea. It's a Silicon Valley fairy tale. But what's missing? A product. And this situation left John Scully, Apple's CEO, at a crossroads. And a tough one at that. Apple was also creating its portable device, the Newton. Newton communicates. Contrary to general magic, Apple had a high chance of rolling out this product. So Scully had to choose, and he did, just months after General Magic was born, Apple released 
the Newton. It was a portable device that did what General Magic had promised to do. And that's not all. According to Forbes, when Scully invested his time and Apple's resources on General Magic, the Newton was already in the works. Still, several people within General Magic claimed that the Newton was basically a product of Quartz's ideas, but Scully has insisted that he believed that both devices could exist. And if you think people at General Magic felt betrayed, think about the investors. Each of the companies in the Alliance had dished out $6 million, and now the parent company had released a competing product. Yes, the Newton failed, but we already know that. But back then, nobody knew what was gonna happen, so things got really serious. The pressure is on. The Newton was a blessing and a curse. General Magic wanted to be the first and failed, but now finally someone lit a fire under the company's ass. The team doubled down on working. The engineers worked hard to punch out a working prototype for it, enamored the press, which released tons of articles and coverage about it. But all this light shining on the company created more pressure for General Magic. Now the devices had to work. The world wanted them. Worse, the world expected them, but the added pressure opened the cracks inside the company. The General Magic Alliance was, at the time, the biggest technological alliance ever created in the US. But inside, there were many competitors. So General Magic needed some sort of independence. And one way to do that was to sell stock through a concept IPO. This is when a startup doesn't have a working product, so they rely on just the concept. General Magic had all the hype it needed, so Goldman Sachs decided to help them see this IPO through. The product was nowhere close to completion. There were issues with the screen, the processors, the software, and the stylus. Still, the heads of General Magic went ahead with the IPO. The first of its kind in Silicon Valley. But as everyone celebrated that they raised $96 million, not everyone was sure the product would be ready in time. The going gets rough. The IPO was a hit. The stock rose more than 90% and the entire world wanted to be a part of General Magic. And still, most of the staff at General Magic was stuck in dreaming about the perfect products for the future. They were high on creativity, too high to notice. But why? Well, to understand, let's look at the product. First, two brands would sell the devices, Sony and Motorola. Each used a system called Personal Link from AT&T. It would have advanced graphics, multimedia, and unforeseen usability, but no internet. That's because General Magic, wait for it, General Magic didn't believe in the internet back then. They criticized it and called it static. Nothing happened there, just a... Small mistake. Their vision was narrow in other aspects too. One engineer proposed having an online garage sale and they laughed it off. It would become eBay. And as you can see, many companies relied on General Magic to work. So when in 1994, there was no working model, they just put pressure on it. It was time to ditch the fun, the creative part, and take on the grind of creating finally a working device. And the entire team doubled down. Many slept in the office working endless hours to come up with something, something that worked. Eventually, after many delays, they pulled it off. Finally, they had a product that worked. It was now the time to decide to ship or not to ship. And that's the question. Management knew the Alliance was pressuring. The engineers knew the product was not ready. But in the end, Porat gave the go ahead the release. The company partnered with Fry's Electronics, one of the biggest electronic stores in the US. And with a big event planned, the media and celebrities flocked to the store, but no one came. On the day of the launch, General Magic sold only 3,000 devices. However, a member of the legal staff told interviews that he had recognized all those buyers. He knew all of them. So why did no one buy the devices? Well, the average consumer considered the devices unnecessary. Those who did buy it said the AT&T network didn't work well. There were responsiveness issues and the batteries died pretty quickly. General Magic was a failure. The stock plunged and in 1995, the pressure was on even more. The offices were no longer this happy-go-lucky place with rabbits roaming free. Well, we actually don't know what happened with the rabbits. We couldn't find anything about them. But anyway, Sony threatened to leave and so did Motorola. There was no point in working with a useless stock and a bad product. Still, Porat exuded confidence. He insisted that General Magic would get there. But in 1996, the final blow would come. AT&T would drop Personal Link, the backbone to General Magic. The end of the magic. After AT&T's departure, Porat left in September of that same year. Out of the 100 or so staff, 80 lost their jobs. And those who remained were mere crumbles of the greatest company you've never heard of. By 1997, the company filed for bankruptcy. And after promising the future, after promising to create the future, 
the company just became fragile. It launched a voice recognition software called Portico, but it only helped lengthen its death up until 2002. But why did General Magic fail? That's what the media loves to discuss. And yes, that includes us, I suppose. But unfortunately, General Magic made several mistakes, one of which was rejecting the power of the internet. Also, it was, I guess, too perfect, right? The romantic attitude, no managers, no schedule, just dreaming. There was no one reeling them in, no one pushing them to push a product through. And then there, of course, there's Apple. It was willing to sacrifice this small startup for its own benefit. The bad thing is they, they did. One can't help but wonder, what if things were different? What if Apple hadn't stabbed General Magic in the back? General Magic was visionary. Yes, but the product failed. And as for the company itself, we can't shy away from the truth. It dug its own grave. Porat, Heltzert, Atkinson all recognized that they didn't lead the team well. But instead of a typical problem of no vision for the future, General Magic was pretty much the opposite. They didn't see the present. But the General Magic fail in the end? You can start by looking at the people who used to work there. Those are just a few. So in the end, it isn't really all about product. It's also about the people that carried that vision onto other projects and other companies. Not only their vision, but probably their understanding of metrics, which we do with Chert Mogul. We've been using their tool for over five years to track the performance of our own SaaS business. And if you haven't already, we recommend that you watch the video that we produced in collaboration with them a few days ago, Customer Churn, How to Save Your Startup. This video dives into what churn is and why it can be deadly for a SaaS business stuff that we all know too well. Thankfully, a tool like ShirtMogul can save your business by providing you with incredibly valuable insights about customer churn so that you can quickly reduce it by addressing the root of the problem. ShirtMogul is free for any company with under $10,000 MRR. And if you have over $10,000 MRR, you can get a $50 a month credit for 12 months by going to ShirtMogul.com slash A big thanks to ShirtMogul for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe.